We here with another episode of Built from Nothing podcast. I'm your host Sean. It's my guy Nell, and we here with a special guest, the shifty, efficient Wonder. killer, John Crosby. Hey man, appreciate you for coming through. you for having me bro for sure i'm glad you came on this platform to tell your story thank you bro for sure but yeah i'm definitely shout out to you though for sure for doing this um let's just let's go straight to high school man i ain't even know you was at city how you get from city to poly so i got accepted to city and not poly so summer bridge come around i still ain't get that acceptance letter from poly so i'm like damn i, I ain't going to dumbbell <laughs> i was like it ain't i ain't going to dumbbell and i really i ain't gonna lie bro i really wanted to go to doug I really wanted to go to Douglas. My mother was like, Jeez. you ain't going to Douglas. So, <laughs> hey, so it was like, damn, I had to go to city. So right after that, you ended up transferring? Yeah, so even with that going on, you know, Sam Brown was trying to get the coach at Poly. Mm-hmm. So he ain't even get it till the day before school started. Crazy. So he called me the day before school started. But I'm already got uniform. I ain't had uniform at city, but I'm already locked in with city. So I'm like, damn, it's kind of late, though, Sam. It's going to be hard to pitch this to my mother, mm-hmm. like, he like, nah, man, just go ahead. He was like, go ahead, man, just go to um City. I'm going to keep in touch with you, but I, I wish you the best. Right after that, you was a part of Sam Brand team, and take me through those three years. I ain't going to lie. The thing I can say about when I got to Poly, bro, it was like everything was a celebration. Like every game we won, like if we beat Force Pup, my first varsity game, when I got there, bro, we celebrated in the locker room like it was a championship game. Cause they never beat Forest Park before ever in history. Yeah. So it was like every day, bro. It was like we was breaking history every game. Mm-hmm. So my first year, it was like it was like a hot. Like we was just happy to win games. You feel me? So that after that first year, we get in the gym. We like, bro. We trying to win a championship. Bro. Yeah. Like, we ain't just trying to keep beating teams and losing. Nah, we trying to really do a championship. We trying to get a city championship or a state championship. So that was our goal going into the second year. But so. Matter of fact, my second year, we made it to Comcast. Mm. So that was big for the whole school. We had, you feel me, we made it to Comcast. First time in history ever making it out of the region. Like, That's tough. So, like, bro, I'm like, like, it was just, it was like a movie, bro. Like, looking back at it, like, everything was, like, it was the championship game. Every time mm. we played somebody. And then my sophomore year, we knocked up killing them. They was number one in the state. When your coach came yeah. and he changed everything, talk a little bit about being a part of that foundation because after that, they continue to just – become a powerhouse at that point. Yeah, he came with the blueprint, though, for sure, because Sam already was coming from Morgan, and he right. was uh, assisting up there with Bose. Mm-hmm. So he came with a lot of that, like, college, like, whole routine of college, like, lifting weights, yeah, getting yeah. conditioning. Like, he was doing that in high school for us. So, like, in the off season, like, how a tree had Lake doing, mm-hmm. we ran cross country, so. So what was recruiting like? What was recruiting like? Because I know you ended up going to prep school. I was locked in with George Mason straight out of high school. Mm-hmm. I was going to go to George Mason, play for Paul H- Paul Hewitt. Mm-hmm. That Tough. was my guy. Like, I ain't going to lie. So I, I definitely was sold on George Mason. I was going to commit. But um, what? It, so basically in the city, this it's changed now. But Polly got, you know, we got the engineering program. Right. So you don't qualify to act the senior year. That scared a lot of college coaches off because usually – in any other situation, you would qualify going into your senior year where you could just coast and get ready for college. Like a lot of dudes do, they just take art, whatever. Just you feel me? You just taking little gen ed classes to get ready. Right. But for me, I still had algebra two with trig. I still had <laughs> geometry. So a lot of dudes look like, oh, that's a little scary. Like, mm-hmm. but they not looking into the situation. Like, bro, he not qualifying not because he don't got grades. He getting all A's and B's, but. He not gonna qualify to the same year regardless. He right. get all uh, A's and not qualify yet until your senior year. So um George Mason started really hitting me up. Like all the schools that was really on me heavy stopped really hitting me up. And it's crazy because one of the coaches, one of the coaches that was recruiting me tried to get me to transfer to St. Francis. Mm. Cause they already like, oh, you go to St. Francis, like they gonna give you the grades. Right. So I'm like, bro, I'm not about to transfer just to get grades. Like, I'm gonna get the grades here. Right, 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 right. right. So 
man, Sam just sat down like, bro, like, what you want to do? And I was like, I mean, I could just go to school, but I mean, I could just take a year of prep too. Like, and so that's what I did. I went to, uh, it was either Brewster or New Hampton. Gotcha. And, you know, Will and I'm um, already had went to Brewster. So right. I was kind of familiar with that. But the coach at New Hampton, man, him just had a good relationship. He kept up with me, like, all through my senior years. Mm-hmm. So I was like, yeah, I'm about to just go to New Hampton. Man. University of Dayton, you feel me? Uh, tell me how you got there and just just walk me through those three years that you was there. And why you why you end up leaving? Before I even got there, though, bro, this this a crazy story because when I was at New Hampton, I always wanted to go to Maryland. Like, first y- yeah, time. yeah, I seen I that. Ain't even gonna lie, like I, I always that. wanted to go to Maryland, bro. So even at Poly, I was hyped about having Maryland around. Just mm-hmm. and I went to all the Nick games. Nick Faust was up there. So yeah. I was like, bro, I ain't gonna lie, this this for me. Right, like, right, right. Not too far from home. Like, I was so, I'm like, bro, I got to work hard so I can get Maryland offered. Mm-hmm. So when I get to New Hampton, bro, craziest thing, I get offered by Maryland right after I'm about to pull the trigger to commit to Dayton, bro. Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm telling everybody, like, I'm sold on Dayton, bro. Like, this Friday, I think it's, I'm going to go ahead and commit. So I go on a visit the week before or something like that. And I, I ain't, you know, I ain't going to commit on the visit. That was the whole rule. Like, don't commit on the visit. Mm-hmm. So I'm on the visit. I'm like, I'm sold, though, bro. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. I'm calling home. Like, look, I ain't going to, this, this for me. Like, mm-hmm. bro, I get home after my visit. Bino, the assistant coach at Maryland, mm-hmm. on a flight from Dayton to Baltimore with me. That's crazy. Bro, I walk past him. He like, Cross, what's up, boy? Where you going? <laughs> I'm going home. Like, I ain't even tell him I was on a visit to uh, Dayton. Mm-hmm. So he walked to the back of the plane like, yo, you just came on a visit to Maryland? I mean, you just came on a visit to um, Dayton? I'm like, yeah, they, they recruit me. <laughs> so, bro, I get out the flight, bro. My phone, they blew my phone up, bro. Like, they did the Maryland treatment. Like, sent me an article of um, them offering me. I was in the ESPN that day talking about I was going on a visit. Like, all oh, that. Like, they just, you know what I'm saying? It was crazy. I'm getting off the plane. Like, I got to entertain it, though. I, I got to. So. Right. I think we did a like shotgun visit where I came up like on a Wednesday or something like that. And I was like, damn, bro, it's a little too late though. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, this is everything I wanted. Like I wanted to go to Maryland, but it was like, it just ain't make sense. Right, right. I ended up picking Dean because it just was the culture, like the coaching staff, like everything. It just felt like home. And I took my mother up there with me too. She loved it too, loved okay. all the players. Like, so it was just like, dang, bro. It just, it was a little, it was like probably like a couple weeks too late. Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna. Lie. I would have went to Maryland. They'd have offered me a week earlier. I'd have, I'd have. I'm going to Maryland. Why you end up departing there? I learned a lot about the business of basketball mm-hmm. at Dayton, and but when I first got there, I was just like, I was just happy to be there. Honestly, like my freshman year, bro. Like I had, um, I had a top ten ESPN play for like a pass I made against Alabama, and we beat them by like 15. That's tough. But I played like. 10, 15 minutes my freshman year. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I was just, that was cool with me. You know what I'm saying? Right. I was on a winning team. We won the 8-10 that year. I was just happy. Second year, I'm like, bro, now let me make an impact. Mm-hmm. Like, that was my whole thing. I want to make an impact. I want to be one of them guys they talking about, even if I come off the bench. So second year, it was kind of like that, you know? It started off, like, kind of rocky, but I got my, like, I started getting it going, like, towards yeah. the end of the year. So now I'm demanding more minutes. I'm demanding a better role, a bigger role. So, that's what we was looking forward to. Like, all right, yeah, next year, it's all you. Mm-hmm. So, boom. Next thing you know, our coach take the job at Indiana. Sheesh. So, I'm like, got to make a decision now. Do I leave? Do I stay? I, you know, it's my year coming up. Like, I'm I'm ready. And I know the community, like, the fans behind me, like, the city behind me. Like, I loved it. And I was, like, real heavy in the community out there, too. Like, I was at all the YMCAs. I was real cool with the teachers around the neighborhood. So I was like, bro, like, they ain't kind of my home. I don't want to leave, even though my coach just left. And, like, so Towson was on me heavy. I took a visit to Towson. But when we got a new coach, I was on my visit to Towson. Mm-hmm. So we kind of started off on the wrong foot, honestly. Like, I could say that looking back now, but I'm not thinking of another because I don't know him. Right. So when he come in, we sat down. He like, yeah, you whatever, we want you here, whatever. He, you know, he, you know the recruiting pitch and all mm-hmm. that. But I'm like, all right, so... I'm like, you know what, bro? Like, if my guys stand, like, all the dudes I came in with, if they stand, I'm going to stay. Gotcha. So all the other dudes I came in with, they was like, bro, we stand. So I'm like, all right, but I'm staying. Cool. Mm-hmm. So he like, yeah, you the only point guard on the roster. 
da, 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 gave me the whole recruiting spill. You know yeah, how they yeah, do. So yeah. I'm like, all right, cool. Like, I don't really care, bro. Like, as long as you give me opportunity, I'm going to work hard, do everything cool, whatever. I'm going to push myself. Mm-hmm. So the off season, bro, I'm, you know, being a leader, whatever, you know, finishing first in sprints, all that kind of stuff, just so I could, you know, build a rapport with him and the coaching staff because they all knew and they don't even know me. So, boom, season stopped, bro. I, I'm killing. Like, it's everything I, I wish for. I'm starting. Uh, we still good. Like, of course, we on ESPN. We got games coming up. So, my first game, we play Auburn, bro. They, like, top 20. They top 25 or something like that. Like, mm-hmm. it's an ESPN game, bro. I started that game and played three minutes in that game. Wow. That's crazy. So, this is my third, fourth game. But, mind you, leading up to this game, I'm averaging, like, 16, 8, and 8. Like, crazy. And I'm calling back home, like, bro, I'm not playing well. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm feeling like I could do more. I'm kind of nervous to do more, but I'm like, I'm ready to do more. But I'm like tiptoeing the line. Like, because like I said, it's a new coaching staff. I don't want to step with nobody told. So a lot of shots, somebody might go under the screen. I might not. I'm, I'm just like, all right, I ain't going to shoot it. But I know me, like, that's anybody going really to do. That's yeah. what I really want to do. But I'm right. holding back a little bit, but still killing, though. Right. You know what I'm saying? So call back home. They like, Crosby, come on. You look good out there, but it ain't you. Mm-hmm. Like, I need to see you. Like, so I'm on the edge, like, be me or, like, conform to what they want. So I just go have a meeting with them, like, da-da-da, talk it out, whatever, whatever. And then, bro, the next, like, I swear, like, right after that, like, <laughs> I played three minutes. <laughs> Again. And I was like, yo, what's, like, what's going on? Like, and then, so, I think, all right, so that was my fourth and fifth game. We playing in the Charleston Classic. We playing Hofstra. Another ESPN Classic, bro. We on ESPN, like, Something happened. He started me again. So now I'm kind of like timid a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, you know what, bro? I don't even care. So I'm being me. I think I had 15 and a half, bro. For <laughs> real, though, bro. Like, I really felt like that game was going to be like, this is going to be the one that like wake everybody up in the country. Like, I'm one of them guys. So, and we played against, uh, I forgot his name, Justin Wright Foreman, bro. Mm. He ended up getting drafted. Yeah. So, like, I played against another respected guard, and I was matched up with him, and I played well against him. And I'm like, second half come, bro. It's, I'm, we going at it. Like, we talk trash to each other and all that. So, second half come, bro. I think, the, like, you know, in, in college basketball, we break it up in TV timeouts. So, you got basically eight wars, what we called it at Dayton. So, you got a four-minute spurt, timeout, go back out. So, I played the first war in that second half, bro, and I ain't played the rest of the – so, that's – I played four minutes in the second half, and then he set me for the whole rest of the game. And ended up with 15. So I ended up with, like, 17 or something like that. I'm just like, bro, this is just – I ain't going to lie. I was pissed, yeah. but I kept my composure. I never, like, acted like I was mad or nothing. Like, I was still a good teammate. I never said it, but me as a competitor, like, I'm mad. Like, I want to go in the office and, bro, what you doing? Like, you tripping. But right. I never did that. I kind of just played it back and just was like, all right, cool. I love dating. I love the education here and all that, but – my pitch to every coach was, is the ball going to be in my hand? And that's all I care about. I don't. So, first I, coach that told me, that's where I was going. Hey, yo. And, and you ended up being Dell State. And you snapped. <laughs> yo, you had the craziest, like, jump yeah. in points I ever seen, yeah. bro. You went from, like, what was it, about six? Yeah, five, I was six. Like six by three years. Man, you went all the way up to 20. I was like, <laughs> sheesh. Third, you had four 30 point games. 36 being your highest. Which one was your, your favorite? Walk me through it. Probably the Jacksonville State. I ain't going to lie. This is how crazy it is, bro. I'm going to give you the behind the scenes. Niggas don't really tell you about this. this Talk to me. Shit, bro. bro, I just watched Ja Morant earlier that year. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, bro, I like you, but I like me. You know right. what I mean? That's right. what type of bag I was in at that time. I'm like mm-hmm. seeing who they talking about in the draft and stuff. So, bro, I'm watching him. And he play in the OVC. And he played Jacksonville State early that year. And he killed them. He did he did great. But they hyped his performance on mm-hmm. what he did against them because they got other guards there. They got junior and senior guards. They're a veteran team. They good defensively. They got length. They got us. So I watched what they said on his, like, scouting report. Like, yeah, John Moran did this against a, you know, a formidable opponent. And mind you, Jacksonville State won the league the year before. Tough. So we on the road. And I'm just thinking, like, bro, I ain't going to lie, like, warming up. I'm like, bro, if I'm one of them guys, like, I got to kill them. Like, that was my whole mindset. Like, I got to really kill them. Like, I just watched Ja kill them, and they hyping them up. He about to be top five pick. Like, I'm like, if I'm one of them guys, bro, I'm going to kill them. 
So I swear, the first shot I shot against them, I shot an air ball and all that, bro. I'm like, I'm like, bro, I'm not one of the ones. <laughs> I guess I'm not one of them guys, bro. Like, I'm like, all right, bro. Like, I just calm down a little bit. Stop really thinking about it. Stop thinking about killing them. Stop just chilling now. So the next shot I make, all oh, net, bro. I'm like, but it's it's like to the point I'm making shots, but they're not touching the rim. So I'm like in my zone. And then the way our offense is, like, I got to be productive. So it's not even like I can chill this game. I, at worst, I'm going to be just over. You feel me? Like, I got to score for us to even have a chance. So, bro, I I just was in my bag, like, for real. Like, everything was going that night. And, like, the way they was guarding me, like, everything, it was more like a pro-style defense. Yeah. So it wasn't no rinky thing. Like, some of the teams I was playing, bro, I ain't going to lie, they was doing boxing one on me, like, it's like, bro, we're in college, bro. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? You, you, I get it, but it's like some games you might see, they might have two, they might just double team you a half court, bro, in, in the MEAC or some teams you play against. You be like, bro, I'm trying to play like VTech where they gonna have an actual footer come out here and, or they gonna drop, you know, um, they gonna try either, um, they call it, uh, and what they got down? They even want down the screen. Like oh, I'm yeah. hearing the coverages, so I can I know as a basketball. React. Yeah, yeah, I know the reaction. And the MEAC, though, bro, they might say spur, or you might hear spur, and you be like, what the? Next thing you know, you see them go zone, and then boxing one you. You be like, bro, you can't even prepare for nothing like that. Like, but you know, V Tech, all the high level schools, like. After you had that big game against them, was that kind of like a like a stamp for you? Like you felt solidified? Like all right, I'm definitely ready for the next level type game. I knew it was like, all right, I'm pretty good once we played VTech. Mm -hmm. VTech, they had a lot, a lot of respect for me like this. And they was beating us, but they was like, bro, the way they was guarding me and stuff, I was like, yeah, they they know. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, first possession, they already knew. And like the way they was guarding me, the way they was talking, shoot, everywhere I go, they got to watch them. I'm like, all right, bro, like, it's VTech now. You know what I'm saying? They don't got to respect me. They could be, you know what I'm saying? They could be like, we don't care. What do you do? We going to beat y'all by 30. So. Stamp, stamp. You graduate any 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 anything with the pro like I'm talking about like the league any workouts with the league? Yeah, I had a workout with the Blue Coats, the Nuggets, and um, I had work one more workout with somebody. Else. I think the Bucks. Okay. And I matched up with that. I ain't I I I've been new like at that point like of course you know you good enough or you but I was definitely second guessing myself a lot coming out of cause just being I guess just being humble about it just yeah. like. But like I'm like, damn, bro, this pro, like, I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm the dream of this my whole life. So for sure, for sure. going into them workouts, I'm like, bro, is this too big for me? Or like, what like, you know what I'm saying? You really start questioning yourself. So I got in a workout with uh Trey Duval, bro. Mm -hmm. Played one on one full, just me and him, mono y mono, and it was Lindell Wigginton in there, bro. These was the two matchups I had in the Nuggets workout. And I'm like, bro, he, he was number one guy in the country at one point. Like, this, like <laughs> I matched up with some tough, these, these some big fish. So, bro, I killed him, bro. Killed, like, killed him to the point where I went home thinking, like, yeah, hey, shit, they might take me in the draft. <laughs> <laughs> they might call my name, boy. I actually watched the draft. Like, I was like, yeah, they might, bro, the way I looked in the workouts, bro, they might call my name, like, for real. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. But, yo. Just, just, just tell us, bro. Uh, somebody that you, that you, that you matched up with, that you killed. I ain't even gonna say killed, but my, I'm gonna say Jalen Brunson. Mm. Man, like, that's tough. Cause yeah, he like Jalen Brunson, bro. I ain't. We played Mac Urban Fire when I played with Melo in Vegas, and we was getting coached by all the NBA. So Jabari Parker was on their sideline. Mm -hmm. Melo was on the outside line. We played uh, like a couple other NBA dudes that they got their own teams. And it was eight teams called the Great Eight. Bro, we played against Jalen Brunson. Uh, we went at it. Bro. Went at it. To the point where we had the free throw line. He like, bro, where you going to CP3 camp? Like, he was really, yeah, he like, yo, you going to CP3 camp? Bro, I see you there. Like, we really, so uh, we got a lot of respect for each other too. Like, even I seen him again, and he remembered me too. I was like, man, that's crazy. That's so, tough. Yeah, I see Jalen Brunson for sure. We definitely probably had forty apiece, bro. We was going at it. Going at it. Going at it. Well, John, man, we we appreciate you for coming through, man. Look, you're a cold blooded assassin, bro. And uh, man, keep you 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 overseas. You killing overseas. I seen you had a twenty five triple double the other day. You found me, but um, I appreciate you for coming through, man. Yeah, no problem, bro. Anytime. Wonder, right, man. Look, that's another episode of Do From Nothing. We get up with y'all later. <laughs>